difficult to calculate just how many people are following shelter in place orders. Data shows McLennan County residents are staying home more. According to Texas DOT, statewide traffic volumes decreased 18 percent. Traffic volumes were down by 36 percent for the week of March 21st, then 41 percent for the week of March 28th. Officials hope this is stopping the spread of COVID-19. Uh, hopefully they realize that uh, there is a significant concern about being uh, a carrier of the, the disease uh, without actually having symptoms uh, and being able to spread it to other folks. A new report shows people in McLennan County are spending more time in residential areas and less time everywhere else. New York's governor striking a more hopeful tone today as COVID-19 data now shows New York is starting to actually flatten the curve. This, as President Trump has indicated, he'd like to reopen parts of the economy by May. Today, the World Health Organization insisting any restrictions must be lifted slowly and incrementally. Meanwhile, a member of the president's coronavirus task force saying government inaction may have cost lives. If you had a process that was ongoing and you started mitigation earlier, you could have saved lives. Obviously, no one is going to deny that. Those remarks made over the weekend. After that, the president responded by retweeting a message that included the words, time to hashtag fire Fauci. White House has since put out a statement saying the president would not fire his top infectious disease expert. Around the nation, the pandemic is now taking hold in new hotspots. The number of confirmed cases soaring by more than 20% of Massachusetts, while Pennsylvania expects a surge this week after more than 2,800 new cases were reported on Saturday alone. The CDC says roughly 25% of those infected in the U.S. are asymptomatic. Other countries have found that number could be as high as 50%. You could be getting a paycheck from Uncle Sam if you're one of those lucky 80 million out there. That's how many Americans the Treasury Department hopes to distribute coronavirus stimulus payments to. If you've already filed your tax return and have authorized direct deposit, you'll most likely see the money drop into your account soon. Treasury officials say most eligible Americans will receive their payments within the next two weeks. Meanwhile, the new IRS portal for non-tax filers is up and going. People who made too little to file taxes in 2018 or 2019 can enter their info on the IRS website. The IRS will use it to determine if they are also eligible for funds. Be sure to stick with 25 News for continuing coverage of the coronavirus outbreak. We're always tracking any new developments, and the latest is always available on our website, kxxv.com. Fire officials respond to a two-alarm fire Easter night into this morning. It happened off of Industrial Boulevard in Waco at a warehouse. When fire officials arrived, that fire quickly spread into a second warehouse. No other details were given. Over the weekend, families spending their holiday picking up pieces of scattered debris after severe weather swept through central Texas. Parts of Limestone County still cleaning up after this damage was left behind. Those storms we saw in central Texas moved west and caused at least two dozen deaths across the south. Deaths now reported in Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina and Arkansas. In Georgia, a man was killed while sleeping after a tree fell on his home. This house was lifted entirely off its foundation, thrown into the middle of the street. One woman saying her brother was killed after getting caught in the storm outside his home. The wind picked up his house and picked up his whole house and it swung and it just tore everything. Everything just ripped off and everything was gone. It was, it was gone. As these storms move through the Northeast, they've actually forced some COVID-19 testing facilities in Pennsylvania and in New York to close because the weather was so severe. Now let's get a check of weather this evening. Evening first alert chief meteorologist Matt Hines is standing by. Matt, how's that weather? 
Yeah, compared to where we were over the weekend, it's actually pretty nice. And now that the wind's starting to die down just a little bit in the sunshine, it's really not too bad here on this April afternoon. As we check out our first alert 25 radar, you can see that things are clear across the region and that will continue here across the region over probably the next several days. We're not anticipating anything too major out there. Extra Co Eagle Eye looking out over Lake Waco. You can see the sun right there and again, a very nice spring day, but temperatures for this time of year are well below normal. We're supposed to have a normal high right now about 77 degrees. It's in the 50s in Waco, Temple, and Colleen between 58 and 59 degrees. But again, in the sunshine, it's not feeling too bad. And as we check out what we're expecting hour by hour, looks like we will be falling into the mid-50s by 7 o'clock and then down into the 40s as we make our way through the overnight hours tonight. Now, I am anticipating a little bit of cloud cover to develop after midnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Let's hope that's the case, or temperatures will be a little colder than what I have forecast in the upper 30s. So if you have any tender vegetation out there that you want to protect, I'd go ahead and do that over the next couple of nights. Matt, thank you. So to come, it's Monday, which means it's a brand new week to support local businesses going through tough times. Today, we're highlighting a pizza place in Temple, making adjustments to serve its regulars. Plus, there's not enough protective equipment to go around, and many are asking why our reserves could not meet those needs. We'll hear from former director of the National Stockpile. Wings, pizza, and things in Temple has needed to adjust to the times we face today. Our Sierra Shipley shows us how they're grateful for the staff even though times are tough. Pizza and wings, one of the best combos you could have for lunch or dinner. We'll have that ready for you, okay? Wings, pizza, and things has this combo nailed in Temple even when business has slowed by almost half. Our sales have dropped probably 40%. Despite a sales decline, owners Mike and Jessica Dent are praising their staff for stepping up. Always tell our staff how thankful we are for all of their hard work and, you know, our, everybody's world has been turned upside down, but everybody seems to be adjusting well. These entrepreneurs have been able to keep 90% of their staff. A lot of that, I'll be real honest with you, is because of the community. Any server will tell you they rely on tips, the tips that the customer leaves. The community support's been amazing. The tips have been great. And just people coming by and just putting money in the jar. Even though the morale is staying high, Dent says there is a sense of loneliness at his restaurant now. When you come in and, and we don't turn on all the TVs, we don't have that hustle and bustle of all the people. Dent and his crew are ready to get back to the way it was before. Well, I don't like the new normal. I like what we had, but I certainly appreciate what we've learned out of this. Learning that it takes a whole community to stand together and stay strong. Sierra Shipley, 25 News, Temple. Hours have changed due to the pandemic. They are open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And to find their deals and family packs, visit KXXV.com. 25 News is committed to you and local businesses, and we want to ensure that local businesses and restaurants have a voice during these trying times. If you would like to share how your business or organization is evolving to support us all, head to KXXV.com open to submit your comments or videos. And if you're not a business owner, but you would like to support local businesses, check out and join the Facebook group. It's called We're Open Central Texas. First Alert Chief Meteorologist Matt Hines is here with a look at your 25 forecast. Matt, how's it look for the week? And we are looking at some decent conditions across central Texas this afternoon. Yeah, temperatures are below normal, but at least we have a lot of sunshine to go with it. Tomorrow, it'll probably be partly to mostly cloudy across the area as we are tracking a disturbance out of New Mexico that will continue to spread some clouds later on tonight in our direction. But you probably notice something there across the Texas panhandle. Doesn't happen often during the month of April, but every once in a while it will. A nice snow band developing here from Amarillo back to north of Clovis near Tucumcari, New Mexico, back into Albuquerque. And that snow could produce one to two inches of snow across the Texas panhandle for tonight. And that's why winter weather advisories are in effect up there. We are not anticipating anything like that, so we don't have to worry about it. But we will have the potential for some pretty chilly conditions over the next couple of mornings. As we check out our Extra Co Eagle Eye downtown Waco out there, looking at the Baylor campus, looking beautiful. On this Monday, temperature 59 degrees, humidity at 48%. 
and winds are out of the northeast at 12 miles per hour. And as we check out what we are anticipating with this cold front, well, it does appear that cold front's made its way all the way down to near Houston and San Antonio, kind of holding up just south of I-10. Look at Amarillo right now, 29 degrees with snow flying there. Contrast that to Lubbock, just an hour and a half away, 50 degrees, 55 Dallas Fort Worth, 59 Waco. But again, with that north wind, it'll continue to draw down that chilly air for tonight. And speaking of that, with clear skies for the start of the overnight hours, we will see 30s and low 40s across the region. And I think these 30s may even sneak a little bit closer to the I-35 corridor. So it is going to be quite chilly when you wake up in the morning. And then we're supposed to be at 77 this time of year. Nowhere close to that tomorrow. Tomorrow, well below normal. Temperatures into the 50s for the most part, a few 60s down toward Bryan College Station. Record high tomorrow from 1924, 91 degrees. We don't even have to think about that one. It's going to be quite cool across the region. And as we check out what we're expecting the next seven days, I think below normal temperatures will continue not only Tuesday, going into Wednesday, getting close to normal as we head into Thursday, but still a little below. Back down a little bit on Friday, and then finally, getting up at normal as we head to Saturday, Sunday, and Monday by the weekend on into next week. So your first alert 10-day forecast showing that we will have the 50s going up into the 60s and 70s the next few days. There's your 30s and 40s for lows the next few mornings. Not anticipating a freeze, but if we stay a little more on the clear side tonight, it could get close in a few locations. So I go ahead and protect any tender vegetation just in case. Mid-70s Saturday and Sunday, 30% chance for a few showers and thunderstorms. One of those days will likely go higher as we will have our next storm system on approach. It doesn't look that severe, though, like what we saw last Sunday as of right now. But we'll continue to track it. Then more 70s as we head into next week. So overall, a couple of chilly nights on the way. Matt, thank you. Time now for a health alert on this Monday. It is allergy season right now, and if just the thought of that makes you sneeze, you are certainly not alone. More than 50 million Americans suffer from seasonal allergies each and every year. And of course, we are, but reducing your exposure to allergy triggers can certainly help. The Mayo Clinic says stay indoors on dry, windy days. The best time to go outside is after a good rain, which clears pollen from the air. Make someone else go outdoors uh, and do the chores or wear a mask, remove clothes you've worn outside and shower to rinse everything off. And finally, take allergy medicine before symptoms appear. If you're already feeling nasal congestion, rinsing your sinuses is a quick, inexpensive way to bring, of course, some relief. Coming up with long lines and some supplies short at the supermarket, some shoppers are getting creative to stock their kitchens. We'll have much more on that. Plus, we look at grocery alternatives that keep your shelf stacked and keep you safe. In addition, keeping your kids educated and entertained has never been easier. The new Facebook group that has everything you'll need. With long lines and some supplies short at supermarkets, some shoppers are getting a little bit creative these days with how to stock their shelves. ABC's Becky Worley has more. This may look like a convenience store shelf, but oh no, it's a restaurant. Selling these provision items is a great way to give back to the neighborhood that maybe can't leave their house right now or doesn't want to leave their house. While they're ordering food from us, they're able to tack on a lot of the grocery items. Local restaurants like this pivoting to sell grocery items that would otherwise be used for serving diners. Get Panera delivered today. And even big national chains joining in. Panera opening a grocery pickup and delivery service out of their noted bread restaurants. And in other efforts to avoid grocery stores, consumers are turning from the mass market to masked markets. Tony and Zana is a regular at my Oakland, California farmer's market, but says they're selling more of their produce online now. It's giving us a little bit more of a base that we can send uh, product to without customers requiring to come to farmers markets and so that works out good for us and them. And some community supported agriculture subscriptions, CSAs, where produce is shipped directly to consumers doorsteps have surged 50%. Another delivery option seeing growth, meal kits. Blue Apron telling us subscriptions are up dramatically. We are seeing more and more people cooking together, eating together as families, sharing meals, even virtual meals virtual dates uh, where people will buy a box together and then and then cook together. That was Becky Worley reporting.
There's now a new hot item for those stuck at home. Walmart CEO says now they're seeing hair clippers and hair dye flying off the shelves. He says at first people were buying food, cleaning supplies, and toilet paper, and then next they saw an increase in puzzles and entertainment purchases. Now people are ready to tackle those self-care items on their to-do lists. 25 News is committed to bringing you the most accurate count of coronavirus cases in our region. We'll check in with our tracker desk one more time. Plus, another check on your Monday night forecast with Matt Hines. Over the weekend, I posted that it can be some wacky weather in April on my Facebook page, and we had severe thunderstorms Easter morning, temperatures into the low 80s yesterday afternoon. This morning, we're in the low 40s with wind chills in the 30s, and tonight, things are rather quiet across the area. But why is this happening? This is more of a wintertime pattern here across the region. We even have snow flying in the Texas Panhandle currently. So let's broaden our view just a little bit. We're going to have to take a look across the United States. So we have what we call the jet stream that is in the upper levels of the atmosphere. A lot of wind going on there. See these clouds here on the left-hand side of the screen? Those are going straight to the north. That goes way up there, and then that falls down here across the United States. Here's what it looks like when you put the jet stream on there. And that is a cold air pattern, folks. This is something you would usually see in January. And in fact, if we would have had a pattern like this in January, it would have been much colder across the area. So we had it in October and we've had it now. So we didn't have it in the middle of the winter, but that is allowing some of that colder air to spill right on into central Texas for tonight. So officially, I'm going to go for a low into the upper 30s at 38 degrees. There could be a few places that gets a little more on the cold side than that because 